One of the biggest enigmas about the emergence of anatomically modern humans has been whether our body plan evolved quickly or slowly. The discovery of the Jebel Erhoud human appears to support the latter, because it appears that our faces evolved into the modern form long before our brain cases did. The information from Jebel Erhoud in Morocco also adds to the discussion over how human, something must be in order for it to be referred to as a modern human, which is a term that anthropologists disagree on where to draw the line. In fact, the fossils pose important questions about the characteristics that characterize our species. Is a Homo sapiens fossil defined by its globular skull, which has implications for brain reorganization? If so, the Erhoud population does not represent members of our species, but rather our close relatives. Indeed, if the key characteristics of Homo sapiens are a small face and the shape of the lower jaw, the Jebel Erhoud remains may actually be from our ancestors, so researchers should be shifting the focus of research looking into the origins of modern humans from sub-Saharan Africa to the Mediterranean. The fact that human evolution is full of mysteries and enigmas is, however, obvious and apparent. Nonetheless, not all scientists concur that the fossils from Jebel Erhoud are those of Homo sapiens. The assertion that the earliest Homo sapiens walked the earth 300,000 years ago has drawn criticism from some scientists. There can never truly be an earliest version of humanity because evolution is a continuous process with no ideal beginnings or endings, instead, there are only intermediate forms that exist between different species. Some scientists believe that admission to the Homo sapiens family should be highly selective. Meanwhile, other scientists are willing to adopt a much more open-ended definition of what Homo sapiens is, and they would be content to cram this specimen into the category of Homo sapiens out of practicality or even philosophical considerations. For instance, the assertions made that the fossils from Morocco belong to the Homo sapiens clade concern John Hawkes a paleoanthropologist at the University of Wisconsin. These scientific papers, he claims, are going too far, by introducing this new category of early modern humans, they have redefined the species of Homo sapiens. Professor Hawkes also points out that the researchers did not compare the remains from Jebel Erhoud, with 800,000-year-old fossils from a species known as Homo antecessor from Spain. Maybe Jebel Erhoud was evolving into modern humans but another possibility is that it is retaining facial morphology from a Homo antecessor-like population, that may have been the last common ancestor of Neanderthals and later African archaic humans, Hawke says. Other archaeologists are also wary of claims that something was the oldest ever found. It's best not to judge by the big splash made when a discovery is first announced, but rather to wait and see some years down the line whether the waves from that splash have altered the shoreline because stone tools could move around in cave sediments and settle in layers of a different age. These archaeologists are also uncomfortable with the researchers' blending of various skulls, and the comparison of reconstructions of whole skulls from fragmentary remains. These skulls can look very different from the population on which they are based, because the reconstruction is a chimera, made up of parts from different skulls. In fact, claiming these remains are Homo sapiens stretches the meaning of that term, according to some researchers. Nonetheless, the story of the Jebel Erhoud people serves as a testament to the resilience and ingenuity of our early Homo sapiens relatives, highlighting their ability to overcome challenges and forge a path forward in an ever-changing world. In the distant past, a group of early people called the Jebel Erhoud people roamed the ancient lands of what is now modern-day Morocco. They were the descendants of a long lineage of hominins, adapting and evolving to survive in the challenging environments of the time. The Jebel Erhoud people lived approximately 300,000 years ago. They inhabited a diverse landscape, with rolling hills, scattered woodlands, and vast plains. Their survival depended on their ability to hunt and gather food effectively. The men were skilled hunters, adept at tracking and capturing their prey, while the women adept foraged and gathered foods. Their primary hunting techniques were based on teamwork and strategy. The Jebel Erhoud people would organize into small groups, usually comprising five to ten individuals. Before setting out on a hunt, they would scout the area for signs of animal activity, studying animal tracks and listening for sounds indicating potential prey. Their hunting arsenal consisted of simple yet effective tools. They crafted sharp stone-tipped spears, which they used to immobilize and kill their prey. These spears were created by shaping stones into sharp points and affixing them to sturdy wooden shafts, creating lethal weapons for the hunt. 
the stone tips were often made from flint or other hard rocks, which were skillfully chipped into shape. There are also some fascinating possibilities in this discovery. The people at Jebel Erhoud were creating tools, based on a sophisticated method of shaping stone tools called Leveloi napping. The fact that Leveloi originated 300,000 years ago, adds to the growing understanding that it is much older than previously believed. Is Jebel Erhoud informing us that the emergence of the hominin line that will give rise to modern humans is connected to this new technology? Does the new discovery suggest that there were multiple hominin lineages living in Africa at the time? Nevertheless, the Jebel Erhoud people relied on their physical prowess and intelligence during the hunt. They would employ various hunting strategies, such as ambushes and driving animals towards natural barriers or into snares. Their success as hunters was also influenced by their ability to communicate with each other, using simple gestures, vocalizations, and shared knowledge of the environment. In addition to hunting, the Jebel Erhoud people were skilled gatherers. They gathered a variety of plants, including fruits, nuts, and tubers, which provided them with additional sustenance and vital nutrients. These resources were essential during times when hunting was less successful or when they needed to supplement their diet. The Jebel Erhoud people probably lived in small temporary camps, which they would establish near water sources and areas rich in resources. These camps consisted of simple structures made from branches and animal hides, offering basic shelter from the elements. They would move their camps periodically, following the seasonal patterns of their prey and the availability of resources. Within their camps, the Jebel Erhoud people engaged in communal activities. Women played a vital role in the community, gathering food, taking care of children, and engaging in activities such as tanning hides and creating clothing from animal skins. Men focused on hunting, making tools, and providing protection for the group. While life was challenging for the Jebel Erhoud people, their resourcefulness and adaptability allowed them to thrive in their environment. Their successful hunting techniques, use of tools, and close-knit community ensured their survival and allowed them to pass down their knowledge from generation to generation. When compared to an earlier study of the same site, the fossils at the Jebel Erhoud site were redated, increasing their age by 100,000 years. This makes the fossils relevant for discussions of Homo sapiens evolution in light of the deepest divergence among modern humans, which occurred around 250,000 years ago. The tooth, under examination was 286,000 years old, which was a bit younger than other artifacts 315,000 year age. The specimens, which were once believed to be Neanderthals because of their elongated brain case, have since been reassigned as belonging to Homo sapiens with an estimated age of 300,000 years. It is unlikely that this population was a hybrid population or a Neanderthal offshoot, because there is no proof that Neanderthals ever lived in Africa but only DNA testing could determine their true ancestry. However, in a virtual last common ancestor comparison of fossil skulls, this skull is most close to Neanderthals, when you consider the entire skull, rather than only the face the elongated shape of the fossil brain case is the primary distinction between these fossils, and those of contemporary humans. The findings, according to the researchers, suggest that the Homo sapiens ancestry had a relatively recent evolution of the brain shape and possibly associated brain functions. Adaptive changes in the way the brain functions may be reflected in evolutionary changes in brain shape, which are likely to be linked to genetic changes in the organization, interconnection, and development of the brain. Through thousands of years of evolution, these modifications may have led to the modern human brain becoming rounder and the enlargement of two regions in the back of the brain. The Jebel Erhoud individuals also lacked prognathism and had very thick brow ridges. Despite this, it was noted that the Jebel Erhoud specimen, whose cranium was complete enough to assess showed hints of modern, basicranial flexion, in the relationship of the face and vault. The teeth of a different Jebel Erhoud specimen were subjected to synchrotron analysis that suggested a modern developmental pattern. However, it appears that the Jebel Erhoud population went extinct without adding to the genetic makeup of living Africans because the revised age of the Jebel Erhoud fossils exceeds the age of the basal divergence among extant humans by a significant margin. Meanwhile, the genetic exchanges between Homo sapiens and Neanderthals are consistent with the existence in Eurasia of a Homo sapiens population, that is much older than the basal divergence among extant Homo sapiens populations. Given that the paleontology of Neanderthals is restricted to Eurasia, 
and the out-of-Africa hypothesis contends that Eurasian Homo sapiens fossils represent failed populations, genetic exchanges between Homo sapiens and Neanderthals are consistent with the continuous existence of a Homo sapiens population in Eurasia. However, these 100,000 to 300,000 year old humans are a diverse group, morphologically. Their morphology is all over the place both within and between samples whenever we find more than a few from the same deposits, as at Omo Kaibish and Herto in Ethiopia or Skul and Kafsa in Israel. Indeed, the paleontology of Africa in relation to the origin and evolution of modern Homo sapiens, is noticeably inferior to that of Eurasia. In contrast to Jebel Erhoud, unquestionable Homo sapiens were found in the human fossils from Kafsa and Skul caves that ranged in age from 90,000 to 120,000 years. Archaic Homo sapiens have also been found in Ethiopia's Herto and Omo 1 fossils. These fossils, that date from 150,000 to 200,000 years ago, belong to the known distribution of Homo sapiens in the Near East, which corresponds to the time period of modern Homo sapiens genesis. Regardless of their precise classifications, the Jebel Erhoud fossils are important to the history of humanity. You can either expand the definition of Homo sapiens to include Jebel Erhoud, or these were creatures that were on their way to becoming modern humans, as this is fossil evidence of a population that in a remarkable number of ways resembles modern humans from 300,000 years ago. Some believe the Jebel Erhoud people are not the earliest Homo sapiens, but rather just another stage in the evolution of hominins. If anything, they represent a transitional stage, caught between modern humans and the ancestors we share with Neanderthals. It is believed, that the split between Neanderthals and modern humans occurred between 500,000 and 600,000 years ago. Therefore, the Homo sapiens side of the family tree, roughly halfway to modern, should contain hominins. The majority of evolutionary biologists would respond that we should expect transitional forms, because there is a lot of variation over space and time. In point of fact, although dating the Jebel Erhoud bones was exciting to Lee Berger, whose team discovered the 300,000-year-old Homo naledi, he is not convinced that modern humans once roamed all of Africa. He claimed that the scientists have taken two data points and not drawn a line between them, but instead just drawn a giant map of Africa. So instead of a small Garden of Eden, now all of Africa is the Garden of Eden. This is now called African multi-regionalism but the discoveries of Homo sapiens outside of the African Garden of Eden continue to poke holes in the Africa-only model of Homo sapiens evolution. Indeed, despite early concerns from phylogeneticists with experience outside of the human genus, the molecular out-of-Africa hypothesis has been accepted as fact among population geneticists for about 30 years. The paleontological basis for the hypothesis is also in doubt a situation that has grown more apparent over the past few decades as Eurasian paleontological knowledge has increased. Please check out all our other videos on human evolution and continue to explore the mysteries of our shared past. Until then, remember to embrace the uniqueness of our shared human heritage. Thank you for watching.